Well, hey, everybody. My name is Courtney Rue, and I'm really excited for you to hear from these ladies in the next few minutes. We're just going to break down the Sabbath, make it maybe a little bit more practical for you, and maybe um, give you just some really great nuggets and ideas. I'm going to let them introduce themselves real quick. Um, we'll start with Jarrett, if that's okay. Oh, no, Jen. Sorry, <laughs> Jen. All right. Hey, friends. My name is Jen Murray. I'm married to Jason. We have three little kiddos. Uh, Emma is a senior in high school this year. Cooper is in first grade. He's six. And Peyton's in seventh grade. He's 12. Uh, we are in what I say is the busiest season of parenthood yet. All three of our kids um, are super active, all in sports. Right now it's soccer and volleyball season, and next it'll be baseball or basketball or tennis or volleyball. Um, you will find us on a court or a field or in a gym nearly every day of the week. We are super busy in the throes of parenthood. And I'm Linda Fleming. Um, my husband Calvin and I recently celebrated our 37th anniversary and um, <laughs> thank you. Um, that's our daughter, Jennifer, and son-in-law, Jake. And um, we are empty nesters, so my days are nothing like Jen's. Um, so there have been years that we're busy, but my life moves at a much slower, calmer pace now. So. Yeah, hey, y'all. I am Jarrett Broom. I am a, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a third year at UGA studying political science, religion, and communications on the pre-law track. Um, outside of academia, I'm involved in Greek life, um, some other campus organizations, and then I get to be a part of the LDP program here um, in Starting Point. So. That's great. Well, thank you all for being here. I think the beauty of a panel is that you hear three very different ideas about what it's like to Sabbath. And so um, I hope somewhere in this you can find uh, yourself and find some ideas and maybe see your personality or your stage of life. Um, our first question, we're just going to run through three questions. Our first question is going to be, what made you decide to Sabbath? Yeah. Jarrett? I'll start. So I thought that the Sabbath was just some word found in the Old Testament. Um, I knew that the Old Testament was kind of scary and boring, so there was no lure for me to do it. Um, I understood that the Lord wanted rest, and that's why, like, Chick-fil-A was closed on Sunday. But I never, <laughs> I was not Chick-fil-A. I was not closed on Sunday. I was, I found myself busy doing all the things. Um, but I, as I started working here at Athens Church, I started reading more. It was in the summer, so I had more time. Um, and I read Ruthless Elimination of Hurry and Garden City, and it really just emphasized its need for it. And then sweet Debbie Butler, she works here at AC, she raved about her Sabbath. And so I was like, you know, if Jesus is talking about it in the scripture, if Debbie Butler does it, I needed it too. <laughs> Jen. Yeah, so just like Laura's story, our journey to Sabbath started in 2020. Um, before that, if you asked my husband, Jason, and I how we were doing, we would say, oh, we're busy. That would be the first words out of our mouth. And we really felt that weariness between the two of us and in our home. Um, and not to make light of COVID, but that time when we were able to stay at home and everything was closed and all the sports were canceled, we began to eat meals together. We quit traveling. We quit being gone every night. We spent time together. We walked outside. We just really began to see what we were missing in our busyness. Jason was in an LDG group reading um, about Sabbath. I ran, read um, Rhythms of Renewal, and we just thought, God is telling us something during this time. This is something that our family needs. Linda? Um, well, my answer to that question is a little bit different. Um, I honestly don't remember a time in my adult life that there hasn't been a, a Sabbath rest day as part of the rhythm in my home. Um, it was not that way growing up. I wasn't raised with that. It wasn't even on my radar. But when um, I got married, my wise husband already had that as a practice in his life. And he said, one day of the week is going to be different. And um, that sounded really good to me. And so it was. It has been for 37 years. And um, I'm really grateful for that. That's awesome. I love, um, it feels like, Linda, your reason to Sabbath was a little bit more of an act of obedience. 
And Jen, yours was maybe a little bit more of surrender or a desire to return to some rhythms you had seen during COVID. And Jarrett, yours was a little bit more of just curiosity, which I think is so precious. I was reading in Jeremiah this week where it talks about like stand at the crossroads and ask, what are the ancient paths? What are the good ways so that I can walk in it? There my soul found rest. So I love because this is an ancient path. I mean, that's what Laura said. I love that you were willing to ask those questions and are finding your way. Second question is where I think a lot of us uh, would like to hear from. What practically does Sabbath look like? What really, like, what are you doing? How are you making this happen? How does this look for your families? Um, Linda, you get us started. Um, Yeah, well, we start by um, just limiting outside um, commitments, anything that's not um, family-oriented, love family get-togethers when that happens and that sort of thing, but anything that's separate from that, we try to um, avoid, still happens sometimes, but we'll talk about that later, (laughs) Um, but, um, and it has looked different through the years, but one thing that's been a constant for us is um, long walks. I love, Laura, that you talked about walking as part of your um, list as well. Um, We walk in the woods sometimes for several hours has always been part of our Sabbath um, consistently through the years, even as our daughter was growing up. She was right there in the woods with us. Um, So that's been a big part of ours. Um, I personally, I think this is like Laura too, I don't cook meals on our Sabbath. Um, I plan ahead and um, just try to have something we can grab whenever. Um, But I do enjoy baking, and I find that restful and uh, life-giving. So I do sometimes bake something that day. Um, Otherwise, just um, occasionally a movie. Um, I enjoy podcasts. I'm really a big fan of jigsaw puzzles. So a podcast and a jigsaw puzzle <laughs> at the same time is is a favorite it's of like mine. Perfect. <laughs> I love that you said that you don't you don't cook, but then you said sometimes you do bake. I don't know about y'all. I grew up in a family where my mom cooked a big meal every Sunday. It was a big deal, and I don't I don't cook on Sundays either. But there's a guilt portion there that I think the enemy brings that I really have to push back on and remind myself that it's okay that I'm not cooking. But I also think that's interesting that you said that you do bake. So it's out of the delight of the Lord. It goes back to where Debbie started us. Like there's a delight for you in baking, but cooking is something that you set down. So it's not necessarily what we're doing. It's how we're delighting in the Lord. All right, Jen, tell us what Sabbath with three kids looks like. So we Sabbath on Sunday, but we call it our rest day. So we go to church together, and then we serve together, and then we come home and we rest together. Um, That can look different every Sunday. It depends on the season that we're in. So in the summer, that might be all afternoon at the pool. And when it's nice outside, our kids love to be outside. So we're throwing the football or kicking the soccer ball or spike ball. My husband loves a good fire in the fire pit or in the fireplace with football on or March Madness if it's basketball season. Um, Our oldest daughter, we always catch her curled up on the couch taking a nap. Um, Jason and I love to take a nap too. But we just are intentional with our time together and we are together. Um, The other thing is we are just just like Laura, we are phone-free and device-free on Sundays. So we put our phones on the counter. We're not checking emails. I'm not grocery shopping or Target shopping. Our kids aren't playing on their devices, playing phone or playing games and FaceTiming their friends. Um, our littlest loves to call us out. Cooper, if he catches us on the phone, he's going to remind us we're phone-free on rest day. Um, so that's really important. And also, we do no chores on Sunday. So for me, that's no laundry no cleaning the house. Jason doesn't do any yard work. Um, I don't catch up on any chores that didn't get done throughout the week. Um, No projects around the house. I know as a mom that sounds really hard, and sometimes it is hard to step over those piles of laundry, but we just choose to leave it, and it'll be there on Monday. I love that because for me, part of Sabbath is trusting the Lord. It's taking my hands off of my life and saying, Lord, you clearly you can do this without me. And so the lack of the chores and all that and run into Target and all that, mm-hmm. it just says, I trust you. You're in control. Jared, what about a college student? What does yeah. that look like? 
So unfortunately, I learned the hard way what Sabbath was as I figured out what it wasn't before I figured out what it was. Um, I was house sitting at the time when I did my first Sabbath, and I just thought I knew what rest was. And so I spent the day in my pajamas, um, binging TV, and I ate cereal for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So it was an understatement to say that I left the day feeling more tired and lethargic than I had started. And the Lord was just really sweet to me. Um, in telling me that, Jared, like, Sabbath isn't the problem. It's the rhythms that you've brought into it. Um, And so the next time that I tried again was that next Saturday, um, and I just established some different rhythms. I woke up slowly. I spent time in my room. I spent time with the Lord. It's funny because I think my misconception with Sabbath was that it was supposed to be all time spent alone, deep dive into the Bible, and that's really not what it is. It's what you delight in, and sometimes that looks like not sticking to my Bible routines and my devotionals on Saturday. It's just getting in tune with what I need, because I feel like far too often I don't get in tune with what I need. Um, I'm a people pleaser. I'm an overcommitter, and so Sabbath has just turned into that day where I say no to a lot of things that I tend to say yes to during the week. Um, I think being a college student puts me in a unique situation, especially at an SEC school in Greek life. You know, it's football season, um, but it still looks like saying yes to football games, yes to tailgates. Um, It's just, if I don't want to do it, then I'm not going to do it. I kind of have to show up for myself on Sabbath. Oh, that's good. Um, Did y'all catch what she said in there that sometimes on Sabbath or every time you don't even practice your spiritual disciplines? Like I, I think like all the Enneagram ones in the room just died, but um, that, I think that's amazing that again, to me, that goes back to the trust, right? That we even trust our salvation in Sabbath, that we're not falling into that trap of that it's about your works, right? That it's about your spiritual disciplines, that you could even rest from that and just open your hands and be free to what the Lord has for you. I mean, you may sit with your Bible, but it doesn't you're in a greater place of freedom. Okay, last question. There are challenges to Sabbath every week. Um, talk to me a little bit about the challenges of Sabbath, and then how do you how do you get back in that rhythm when you do have a difficult week or things are especially challenging? Jen, you get us started. Yeah, so I think that just our culture in general makes it hard to Sabbath, especially as a mom. For our family in particular, our son plays travel ball. So we he does club soccer, and he does have games on Sunday. Um, we've had a lot of discussions and prayer, really prayerful about that. And we know that sometimes what is delight for one can be work for the other. And so we know that um, what he loves to do, and we're going to go do what he loves to do, that's work for mom and dad. So we're going to go do that all together, be together with him, and then we're going to come home and mom and dad get to rest. Um, he kind of knows that that is the rhythm and that's the choice that we make. Um, I think that Annie Downs has a quote that says, to remember that Sabbath is a practice, that if you mess up, it's okay. You pick it back up again next week. And so we keep that in mind. Sometimes things are going to come up, and we're going to have things to do, just like this travel ball right now, but that's okay. We're going to kick back and do it next week. Yeah, that's so good. Um, Jarrett, talk to me about your challenges as a college student. I just think I come into Sabbath with all of that weekday baggage. I fall into busyness. I say yes to things that I probably don't need to say yes to. I answer the phone call to a friend that I really don't have the emotional capacity to answer. Um, and so just kind of being enslaved to all of those pressures that I feel like I, I experienced during the week of, you know, say yes because FOMO, say yes because culture is telling me that I should want to do this. Um, and so I think the challenge or the thing that I had to do to combat the challenge of falling into that busyness is to prepare. I had to pick up things during the week like texting that friend, making that call, running that errand, cleaning my room, doing laundry during the week so that on Friday I could put it down and resist the urge to pick it back up on Saturday. Girl, you picked up your mat. <laughs> I should <laughs> Laura, I was listening. That's good. <laughs> Trying. Linda, what about you? Um, I I just think um, that it's kind of a universal challenge that we think there's some way we can do this wrong, and um, I don't think that's true. I think that if we are making intentional decisions, then 
then it's not wrong. I think we 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 won't fail if we are just making decisions the best we can a week at a time um, towards just honoring that day. That there's no there's no way you can fail if you're being intentional about it. Um, I, and I think that um, we want a list of of what we can and can't do because then we can see if we're doing it right. And um, and it it doesn't work that way. And as as um, Laura mentioned and also Jen that you know what's work for me may be rest for someone else or vice versa. So um, in a way, we think we want the list, but actually it's even better than that. It's, it's good news that we get, to, we get to decide, we get to choose for ourselves what is life-giving for us. Um, and as far as the, um, you know, what happens when it doesn't work out a certain week, um, I think that once you have that practice in your life, um, just as a rhythm of your, your home, your life, then that doesn't really trip you up. Um, it just, it happens sometimes. And um, you just, um, you know, if you can shift it to another day, that's great. Most people, that's not an option for, I don't think. And so um, you just pick it up, you just pick it up the next time. And, um, and it just makes it all the more special when it comes. You just really look forward to it more when you aren't able to. Mm, so good. Anything you wanted to share before we wrap up? Yeah, I just want to share to all the moms out there. I think that um, sometimes just the busyness and hurry of life robs us of our joy with our kids, um, that we forget how to be intentional and how to play with them. Um, John Mark Comer says that hurry robs us of our ability to be present. And sometimes that looks like forgetting how to play with them, forgetting how to have fun with them. Um, my kids love to swim in the pool, and my husband hates to swim in the pool. He gave me permission to share this. Um, but over time, as we begin to practice Sabbath, I begin to see him really enjoy playing in the pool with our kids, to get in, to splash with them, just the freedom that Sabbath gave him to forget those emails and everything and to really play. And one day over the summer, Cooper said, Mom, I, I can't wait for next Sunday because rest day is my favorite day. And I hold that little simple statement in my heart and treasure it because what a gift we have as moms to mirror what God does for us. He gives us this gift. And scripture says that where our treasure is, there our heart will be. Or where our attention is, there our awareness will be. So we get to model this for our kids, that where that our attention and our time is, to, for, is for them, just like God shows us that. Yeah, I... I would just say that all three of us aren't here because we're some super spiritual people who have it all figured out. I think I speak for all of us to say that, you know, we would love to have a richer and a deeper and a longer Sabbath, but we're still growing. Um, we just found that this is the pace that the Lord has called us into. We were made for different intentions and for a deeper love and a richer love that is found whenever we push back on all the pressures of the world. Um, and so now we're just, we just want people to walk alongside of us with it. So, so good. Will y'all thank me? Help me thank them for being here. <laughs> Thank y'all for being brave and courageous to stand up here and talk about something that you're in process with. It's really rich and really sweet. I want to close this part with just a quote and then some scripture. Um, this quote is by Walter Brugman. It came across my path this week. Sabbath is not simply the pause that refreshes. It is the pause that transforms Sabbath is an invitation to receptivity, an acknowledgement that what is needed is given and need not be seized. I love this message version of Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30. Are you tired? Asked Jesus. Are you worn out? Are you burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take, real re take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. I'm going to pray over us real quick, a prayer from Lectio 365. I don't know if any of y'all do Lectio 365. It's an app. Um, I started it a few months ago. It has 
been transformative in my life. That has a morning and an evening devotional, um, but it has a special Sabbath devotional that is shortened every Sunday. And this is the prayer it always ends with. So y'all bow your heads and I'd love to pray this over you. May this day bring Sabbath rest to our hearts and our homes. May God's image in us be restored and our imagination in God be restored. May the gravity of material things be lightened and the relativity of time slow down. May we know grace to embrace our own finite smallness in the arms of God's infinite greatness. May God's word feed us and his spirit lead us into this week and into the life to come. Amen.